Hi, this is Nicole with Global Nomads Group. In this webcast, we will explore the roots of the humanitarian crisis that has led to present day challenges in the DRC. Through our guest speaker panel, we will learn more about what we can do as global citizens to help combat this crisis. The DRC is often thought of as a poor, underdeveloped country rife with conflict. Few tend to think of the lively youth who exist within the community and how the conflict is impacting them. Truth is, due to various reasons and a multitude of players, this complex conflict is impacting the lives of Congolese youth in various forms. The DRC has one of the world's largest numbers of child soldiers, and millions of children are out of school. As a viewer, you may be asking, what could I possibly do to help the Congolese youth? Let's watch this video clip produced by One Million Bones. Students Rebuild, A Path Forward is a joint initiative between One Million Bones, the Bezos Family Foundation, CARE, and Global Nomads Group. The Path Forward Challenge is an exciting way for everyone to get involved, even you. It calls on students worldwide to create paper mache bones, which will become part of an art installation on the National Mall in DC in 2013. Through this, we will bring awareness to humanitarian atrocities worldwide and help the students in the DRC. It's easy. You create a paper mache bone, and this triggers a dollar donation to CARE by the Bezos Family Foundation. And this donation goes to ETN, a, youth, a CARE-supported youth center in Goma. Through this webcast, we'll hear from some of our partners and learn more about, how, um, about the Path Forward Challenge. The two main questions we will tackle in the webcast today are how is the conflict impacting Congolese youth and what can I do as a global citizen to help? We have an amazing and diverse panel of experts who are dedicated to raising awareness about humanitarian atrocities and improving the lives of Congolese youth. Who, they are working on the ground and internationally. They're here to speak with us today so we can better understand what is fueling this conflict and impacting the lives of Congolese youth. But before we begin, I'd like for all of you to take a poll question which we will refer back to at the end of the webcast. If you haven't already done so, please scroll to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and take the poll question. The question is, what is the number one contributor to the lack of education in Congo? Weak infrastructure, the price of education, insecurity, or all of the above? Please take a moment to answer the poll question. And don't forget to send in your questions and comments through the live chat function, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Please state your name, where you're from, and your question, and we'll get to those throughout the webcast, so get ready to send those in. So now I'd like to introduce our panelists. 
First, we have J.D. Steer, who is Raise Hope for Congo's campaign manager. He has over a decade of experience with campaign and community organizing, advocacy, and politics. He has advised for and co-founded numerous organizations with missions focused on improving the lives of those living in Congo, Uganda, and Sudan. He most recently served at the White House with the Obama administration and worked on the Obama 2008 campaign. Next, we have all the way from Congo is Timothy Mwamba Akili Mali. He is a care project manager in Goma, Congo. He has five children and has been working with CARE for almost a year. Prior to becoming a project manager, he worked for Heal Africa, a local NGO and hospital for five years. He worked as a nurse and specialized in gender-based violence. At CARE, he manages a social reinsertion project for survivors of gender-based violence. Next, we have Isaac. He is a 23-year-old student at ETN which is a vocational youth center supported by CARE. He is from South Kivu in Congo. At ETN, he studies computing, electronics, and electricity. He would like to work in that field when he finishes his training at the end of the year. Isaac believes technology is a great way to connect with different people worldwide, like he is doing now with his peers in North America in the Students Rebuild Social Entrepreneurship Program. And last, we have Pauline Zerla, who is our Students Rebuild Fellow, who has been working with the students at ETN for four months. She will be translating as needed throughout the webcast. As of 2010, 1.8 million people have had to flee their homes, abandon their livelihoods and schooling to escape the fighting, at times spending days in the bush or in overcrowded refugee camps. Thousands of children have been kidnapped and trained to kill. Still, young Congolese are banding together to share ideas, strength, and hope for the future. Let's meet some of those youth from ETN, a youth, youth care center in Goma, Congo. ETN is a vocational training center based in Goma, Eastern Congo. It provides a one-year program for former combatants and child soldiers, as well as for victims of gender-based violence. The students here at ATN range from 13 to 22 years old and often didn't get any other type of education prior. So this is ATN. <laughs> Eutène se trouve dans la ville de Goma. Moi, je fais le micro informatique, électronique, électricité ici à l'Eutène. J'ai choisi la végétation. Souvent, on me dit qu'au Canada, il y, a, il y a une grande partie de la forêt. Alors... Et au Canada, ils sont développés par l'agriculture. Alors, je voulais tout simplement savoir comment ils ont fait pour parvenir à y arriver là où ils sont. En RDC, nous avons beaucoup de cultures. Il y a les, les gens qui jouent. Qui, peuvent, qui démontrent euh, le Machi, d'autres euh, les Kinyarwanda, d'autres les Kinande, d'autres les Kiunde. Toutes les cultures ont fait aussi des jeux. Through these videos, I will share with you all the challenges and actions that have been taken in Eastern Congo to overcome the consequences of long lasting conflict in the region. I will show you how by making a room and taking part in the Students Rebuild Challenge, you will make a difference in the life of your Congolese peers here in the Congo. Every Thursday, I will be updating you through my field blog. I will also be adding photos, videos, and other exciting things to make Congo come alive to you. You can continue to learn more from Pauline through her blog on the Students Rebuild website. Now, UNICEF has stated that after years of war and economic decline, the picture of education in Congo is bleak. 4.6 million children are out of school, and 2.5 million of those are girls. We will now address these challenging issues with our guest speaker panel. Timothy, how do Congolese youth typically perceive themselves? Empowered, disempowered, or hopeful? Yes, hello? 
But I can speak about around the youth in the, our country. After many war with uh, left in the Congo, we have many difficulties to, to have empowered of youth and uh, these are poor our, our next day to, to live. But I can explain in, in the French if uh, our, our, our sister can traduce for us. Je voulais dire que les jeunes ont beaucoup de difficultés et surtout après le conflit, on a assisté à beaucoup de choses qui bloquent le développement des jeunes et qui vivent maintenant dans le désespoir. Right. Um, so Timothy is saying that um, because of the conflict, it's really, really difficult for the young people to feel empowered. Um, they rather would feel hopeless um, about the future, and that actually really blocks the development uh, for their future, future lives. Thank you. All right, thank you, Timothy, and thank you, Pauline. And Isaac, what is it like growing up in Eastern Congo? How did you hear about ETN? I'm Isaac, a student from ETN. Uh, about this question, I can say that here in Eastern Congo, uh, we have some problems which are increasing to young people. Uh, I can say the first problem is the missing of child. It means many responsible of families don't have a job. Then they are unable to pay school things to their children. Then this problem leads to many children or many young people still without studying. A second problem is that when some young people finish their start, none of them are not employed. They miss the job. They still jobless when they have just finished their study. And this is really a problem because it leads, it leads many young people to become thieves for satisfying their needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isaac. JD, we're learning a lot about the importance of education for Congolese youth. Ray's Hope for Congo focuses their attention primarily on working with North American youth so they can better understand how the conflict is impacting their peers. Why is it so important to educate North American youth about the challenges of their peers? Yeah, that's a great question, Nicole. Thank you. Um, I, I believe for all of my life that um, we are all connected, um, human beings on this planet, to nature, to the world, um, and that's really manifested in a very clear way um, with American youth and Congolese youth. Um, one of the factors um, causing instability and insecurity in Congo is the mining of minerals, gold, tin, tantalum, and tungsten, the four conflict minerals. These four minerals wind up in our smartphones, our laptops, our cameras. And so it's so very important with North American youth being consumers of these products to understand the effects that uh, these products are having on the youth of, of Eastern Congo. And I'm looking forward to getting more into that. Great, thank you so much. And Timothy, why are vocational centers so important in Congo's educational landscape? And once they receive training, are there job opportunities out there for the students? Thank you. Je pense que ce que je voulais dire que plus il y a des difficultés, plus les jeunes ont des difficultés à se développer. Ces centres de formation, c'était une opportunité spécifique pour permettre à ce que les jeunes se retrouvent en fait de récupérer les pertes. So he's explaining that, like he said um, in his previous answer, um, really because of that difficult context in which young people have to live here in the DRC, um, those centers have been a tailored answer um, to the problems that Congolese youth are facing and that they hopefully will provide them with um, opportunities. 
Et en plus, vous pouvez voir que si quelqu'un a déjà une connaissance, avec l'approche la, de voir très loin au-delà de, 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 de son ignorance qu'il était, il peut être capable de se trouver de l'emploi. Ce qui fait cette bonne formation professionnelle les rend rentables dans la vie quotidienne. Um, he was explaining that what's really important in those centers is that young people not only learn um, a skill and then w which will um, support them in finding employment after the training, but also it relates back to what JD was saying about the fact that we all connected in, and it's really the importance for them to gain that openness um, of the world and the context in which they live in. Thank you. Merci. Thank you for that, Timothy. And now we're going to break for a quick question and answer session from our audience. So the question is coming from Wine Dance in New York from Jasmine. She's wondering, life isn't easy in Congo, so what can I, being youth today, do to help make life easier? So I'd like to first pose that question to uh, Timothy and Isaac over in the DRC. The situation is very difficult là bas uh, ici. Donc du coup, qu'est-ce que moi, peut-être, je peux faire pour aider Elle, Vous deux, vous pouvez répondre. Vous voulez répondre, Timothée Ok, merci. C'est Timothée qui voulait parler. Dans ce sens-là, l'essentiel, c'est d'abord l'identification de ces besoins qui sont accrus par rapport aux jeunes. C'est une bonne chose. Et en plus, penser à, une, à un développement professionnel de ces jeunes-là, en fait, ils vont se retrouver dans leurs moyens de subsistance pour le développement de leur famille. Ça, c'est une très bonne chose. Merci. Um, so, um, I'm just going to translate what Timothy just said. So, thank you for that great question. Um, he was saying that the two way is which is in about the problem as well as what what they need. Um, and the second thing is that to create centers like that, there is a lack of resources available for that. So being aware of that and maybe work to um, raise more resource would be uh, of great help. Tu peux répondre aussi? Uh, about this question, I can say, yes, Isaac, I can say that uh, it means we have to sensibilize the Uh, young people, when they are just sensibilized, then later we can uh, we can uh, see how to uh, how to work together for the development of our government. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Timothy and Isaac. So now we have a question coming from the Epiphany School in New Bern, North Carolina. They want to know, what skills are you learning at ETN? So I'll pose this again to Isaac. Thank you. Donc en fait, Isaac, la jeune fille en Caroline du Nord, demande qu'est-ce que vous apprenez à ETN. Thank you for that question. At ETN, uh, we are learning many professions, uh, namely, I can... Uh, Uh, I can uh, I can say we are learning there are electricity uh, we are learning the computer science uh, we are learning there are the uh, how to build the house uh, we are learning also uh, how young people can uh, Oh, sewing. Sewing. Uh, that is, we are learning also how to, to do the, the sewing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Isaac, and thank you from uh, New York and North Carolina for sending in those questions. And remember to answer the poll question by clicking on the bottom right corner of your screen. And now we'll move on to our next segment, which will be focused on child soldiers and gender-based violence. Conflict impacts society in a number of ways. And in this segment, we'll take a closer look at how the conf conflict is impacting Congolese youth in two ways, the use of child soldiers and the use of gender-based violence as a tool of warfare. 
Let's have a look at a video created by Pauline, our Students Rebuild Fellow in the DRC. These Congolese youths are attending classes at ETN, a vocational school in Goma, Eastern Congo, that is supported by Care International. At first glance, you may not notice anything different about these teens, but if you listen to their stories, you will find that many are former child soldiers. <laughs> On a vu que là, la vie est trop difficile, alors mes amis avec qui on était ensemble dans la forêt, ils sont passés, ils, ils ont fait, ils sont, ils sont étudiés ici à l'Eden, après avoir étudié, ils m'ont rencontré là où j'étais, dans le quartier, ce sont des qui m'ont orienté ici à l'Eden, et raison pour laquelle je suis arrivé ici, aussi j'étudie ici à l'Eden. Après avoir quitté dans la forêt, qu'est-ce que j'ai trouvé dans la vie civile Je peux le dire, c'est que j'ai trouvé de l'intérêt. On a la période là des troubles, il y a eu de recrutement, de recrutement de la part des groupes armés pour gonfler leurs effectifs. Ils ont recruté tout le monde, y compris les enfants, les mineurs, ces enfants-là ont appris de mauvaises choses avec les groupes armés. Ils ont perdu vraiment le sens humain, les, les bons comportements so, sociaux. On leur avait appris à, à tuer, à voler, à violer, des choses comme ça. Et du coup, il y a eu euh, des mécanismes pour retirer ces enfants-là de l'armée ou bien des groupes des armées. Mais ça restait toujours compliqué. On les a retirés de ces groupes armés pour les les faire rentrer dans leurs familles respectives, mais sans aucun mécanisme d'accompagnement. Et, et voilà, ils sont là, mais ils, ils n'ont pas repris les, les bas de l'école, par exemple, ils, ils, ils n'ont pas d'argent, ils, ils sont chômeurs, alors ils, ils se débrouillent avec, avec certains font la malicité, d'autres utilisent des de mauvaises pratiques pour survivre. Leur intégration dans la vie sociale, ça, ce n'est pas du tic au tac. Il faudrait euh, envisager beaucoup d'éléments pour que leur intégration soit euh, effective dans, la, dans leur famille respective. Et donc, euh, il faut un, un certain nombre d'éléments pour qu'ils aient encore le com bon comportement. Euh, social, socialement, pour qu'ils puissent bien vivre avec les autres. Sinon, c'est une bombe à retardement si on, ils ne sont pas vraiment accompagnés dans leur milieu de retour. This is where the role of vocational training centers like ETN becomes crucial because they are able to provide education, develop livelihood skills and gain community support. Former child soldiers are given an opportunity to rebuild lives and have a greater hope for the future. Although vocational programs have been beneficial, the issue of child soldiers still remains current. Armed groups are still active in eastern Congo and Goma due to the ongoing conflict and still include children. Even so, hope remains alive in the eastern Congo and let's learn more from our panelists. JD, how has instability and insecurity affected the lives of Congolese youth? And how does Raise Hope for Congo help combat these issues from the ground up? You might be asking yourselves what I first asked myself when I started to learn about the issues. Why isn't the government and why aren't the police in Eastern Congo protecting the youth? And so <clears throat> as I've done my research over the years and become more of an expert on what's happening in Eastern Congo, I encourage everyone in your classrooms to select to do a report, to do a research project on Eastern Congo. There's so much material out there. On our own website, raisehopeforcongo.org, there's limitless material on policy and research from the ground, helping to add deep context to the many issues on the ground. Um, one of the main dynamics in Eastern Congo is with a lack of government. The government is very weak in the eastern region in the, in, in the country and with a real lack of a police force armed groups 
not directly in control of the government, oftentimes in competition with each other over resources on the ground, wreak havoc on local communities, sometimes as retribution with each other, sometimes to shock fear in a community. And one of their main tools for, um, for um, the atrocities that they commit is to kidnap and force children into their ranks um, to, uh, to, to add to their soldier base. And so, one of the ways that um, child soldiers are, are victimized and brought into this um, is this control over the minerals area. And I'm looking forward to chatting more about that as well. Thank you. And Timothy, as we saw in Pauline's video, once youth are demobilized, it is often difficult for them to reintegrate into society. Why is it so important to focus on social reintegration programs, and how do you do this at CARE? Merci pour la parole. Je pense que le problème des vies combattants, les enfants dans l'armée et les problèmes de violence basés sur les chars à l'est de la République démocratique du Congo, c'est un problème très préoccupant pour les organisations d'assistance multisectorielle. Um, so thank you for the great question. Um, he was saying that um, that problem of reintegrating youth into society uh, after violent conflict is really um, incorporated in a lot of organization, international and local, um, um, included in their mandate, um, especially the organizations that work on multi-level interventions like care. Et c'est pourquoi on se rend compte que avec les conséquences qui sont possibles par rapport aux, aux, à ces affaires de la guerre, nous avons un de conséquences qui nécessitent une bonne assistance pour l'intégration sociale. Um, so they have identified that because of conflict and this conflict specifically, specifically here has had tremendous consequences of youth, there is a need to really have that multi-level, multi-sector approach to supporting youth and therefore to find a way to um, reintegrate them into society. Aux normes socio-culturelles, ça complique les choses davantage parce qu'une fois c'est un enfant qui vient des groupes armés, la société la stigmatise ou c'est un enfant qui, ou un jeune qui, vient, qui, est, qui a subi des violences sexuelles, il est stigmatisé dans la société. Um, so, one of the main problems and challenges that CARE and other organizations have to face is stigmatization. So, young people that, that have taken part in and have joined uh, and now left a home group are often stigmatized in their society and it's really difficult for them to go back in the community. Um, the second element is survivors of gender-based violence also have to face um, stigmatization in the groups from which they are from and also will have a lot of issues going back into the community. So this is where um, the project that he manages at CARE um, is working on. That's why with CARE there are these approaches Il y a l'approche d'abord de la sensibilisation, sensibiliser les communautés pour la réintégration, l'acceptation de ces, de, de ces survivantes, et aussi uh, l'identification et un renforcement des capacités pour l'autoprise en charge de ces jeunes par rapport à des différentes formations. So the intervention that CARE um, is working on is twofold. The first one is to work on uh, raising awareness and sensibilization of everyone in the community um, to support um, the survivors of gender-based violence and um, ex-combatants. Um, and the second um, direction uh, that CARE really uh, works in is to, um, in centers like ETN, uh, provide actually skills and baggage for those young people to then be able to go back into society. Thank you. And Isaac, um, what are your goals and aspirations? And given the youth, given the challenges that youth are faced daily in Congo, how do kids just stay kids in the DRC? Thank you for giving me the street check. Uh, as I'm younger, I want to bring a saw my stillness uh, for building our country. And, uh, and I have a, 
I have a target. I'm studying the computer science, which means I have a target to become a computer scientist. And uh, when I, I will finish my study, I want to maybe to be a leader of a firm. Uh, or if, we, if God can bless me, I can form my prepare my prepare company. Thank you, Isaac. And we're going to break again for questions from our audience. So the first question comes from Destiny from Plantation, Florida. And she wants to know, does the mining of minerals supply positive employment opportunities for Congolese youth? And how can we limit the use of, Cong uh, of uh, conflict minerals in the US? So JD, I'll post this to you. That's a great question, Destiny, and, and now we get to dive into what we can do. And there's so much that you can do um, right there from your classroom, when you're at home at night on Facebook, at Twitter, on Twitter. Um, what links us to Congo can also be the way that we really play a meaningful role in solutions in Congo. As I said, the four conflict minerals wind up in every one of your smartphones, laptops, cameras, computers, all of your electronics. And one powerful thing is that the electronics companies here in the United States are very sensitive to what youth are saying through social media about their products. And so if you have an iPhone, um, what you say about your iPhone on Facebook and Twitter, Apple's paying attention. And so we have a powerful consumer voice, youth being the most sought after demographic by electronics companies. And so we can join the movement that One Million Bones and the Raise Hope for Congo campaign have started, and we need your help to join, to coordinate our efforts through social media, actions, petitions, and be able to bring an end to conflict minerals in Eastern Congo which, getting to the first question, um, by legitimizing the minerals trade in Eastern Congo, um, we can have businesses and mining companies that are operating in Eastern Congo begin to develop and support community development in Eastern Congo. Instead of taking minerals and the money supplying and funneling to armed groups, um, the minerals trade can support education, the construction of roads and clinics and infrastructure. And there are a few small examples of this happening happening in a good way in Eastern Congo. Motorola and their Solutions for Hope program is one US company that's doing things right in Congo. Um, Intel, the chip maker, has also signaled that it's interested in being a part of the solution in Eastern Congo. And so on RaiseHopeForCongo.org, you can write your electronics company and take actions with us and sign up to be a part of the movement. You can make a bone with one million bones and stay connected to groups such as Students Rebuild and global nomads. Thanks, JD. And another question coming from the Epiphany School in New Bern, North Carolina. What do students do after they complete schooling? So Isaac, I'll pose this question to you. I thank you for that question. Uh, when uh, some students finish their training at Adam, uh, some of them are uh, applied to some uh, some organizations. Uh, there are some ele electricians who can work even uh, in electricity electricity company. Uh, and the others, other others people uh, can uh, form their pro. I can say they can they can form their proper uh, proper work because uh, there are some uh, there are some many some people who work how to, to how to 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 buy some then there they can work for. for uh, And now we have another question coming from Emmanuel from Wine Dance, New York. He wants to know how many youth don't have the opportunity to go to school. So, Timothy, I'll pose this question to you. Combien de gens jeunes n'ont pas accès à l'école ici au Congo? Ah, ça c'est un problème, ma, ma soeur. Je suis sûr que plus on est dans le conflit, plus on n'a pas l'accès à l'école. Et s'il y a l'école, 
c'est quelle formation Il y a les infrastructures scolaires qui ne sont plus à, hauteur, à la hauteur de bien servir les, les élèves. Le pourcentage est à la hausse. Le taux d'analphabétisation au Congo est élevé actuellement. Um, so, Timothy, I think, thank you for that question that actually highlights a very big problem here. And it's really kind of a vicious cycle because the more, the more there is a conflict, the less there is an access to education. And then um, stigma just stays as a really import, important contextual element. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, um, however, I mean, there are, there are a couple of um, initiatives that are created to support um, young people who can't access indication, ETN as an alphabetization program, I think. Um, and also um, the fact that, you know, that the level, the number of people that are young people that now can have an education is rising. Thank you. Great, thank you for that. And another question coming from Wine Dance New York from Claire and Carlos. They would like to know, how do you survive in Congo? And do you have health care and hospitals? So Timothy or Isaac, please feel free to answer this question. Il y a une jeune fille de New York qui demande euh, comment, on, comment on survit ici au Congo et si on a euh, des services de santé et des hôpitaux. Oui, oui, on a les services de santé et des hôpitaux, bien sûr, mais accès uniquement dans les centres-villes, dans les campagnes, ça pose problème, parce qu'il y a des infrastructures, comme je venais de le dire tantôt par rapport à l'éducation, qui posent problème, même actuellement, les médecins sont en grève, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a un problème, il y a la vie, mais la vie qui est limitée, par comparaison avec les autres. Um, so he was explaining that, um, yes, I mean, there are hospitals here in the Congo. Um, however, it's really an issue, um, a big difference if you live in the city or a town or if you live in a country. Uh, so, for instance, here in Goma, where we are right now, um, there, is, there are a couple of hospitals. But it jumps back to what he was saying before about education, is that in the cities, yes, you can find school, but as soon as you would go outside and go to the country, then it becomes really challenging. So he, he was ending by saying, yes, there is a life here, but it's very limited. Thank you. All right, thank you. And one other question from a teacher coming from Scarsdale in New York. How do the child soldiers or people involved in the conflict know about ETN? And how do they find safety there? So Isaac, please take this question. Thank you. Euh, donc, il a, il a expliqué qu'il y a un professeur qui participe au programme de vidéoconférence qui, a, euh, qui pose la question, voilà, pour les anciens combattants, comment on entend parler, comment on passe d'un ancien, d'être de, de, un combattant à être un étudiant à ETN Isaac, tu peux répondre si après vous voulez ajouter quelque chose. Merci pour cette question. Tu sais, il y a des gens qui ont des gens qui ont des gens qui ont des gens who came from uh, in the army, there were four, four soldiers, children, and when they, they come, there are eight times try to give them an education. Uh, it, it shows them how they can live among the population and uh, educate them and to train them some professions which can be beneficial to them in their future life. Uh, it means really they change. When they come, they were so just but when they begin to start, they become a good student. Je peux ajouter quelque chose par rapport à ce que mon ami Isaac venait de dire. Uh, je pense que c'est ce que je venais de dire la fois la, tantôt que les difficultés qu'on rencontre par rapport aux jeunes qui viennent des ex des ex combattants ou les civils de violence basés sur les gens, ils acquisent un retard. Et lorsqu'on les identifie en les sensibilisant, ils quittent l'armée. Là, on, on identifie quels sont leurs besoins réels par rapport à leur survie. Et d'abord, entre autres, il y a cette ne pas. Ouais. Um, ok, so he was saying it's a great question, so he wanted to jump in, jump in, sorry, and add a little bit of more information. So he was saying that one of the big challenges is that um, ex-combatants and survivors of gender-based violence um, 
really are really way back in their education. So what, that's the big challenge. And so there are groups from NGOs and um, the UN force here in Goma that um, go to sensibilize young people and encourage them to join uh, centers like ETN. And I was, was going to explain what happens um, at that time. Yes. Et avec ça, le centre ETEL encadre ces jeunes-là. Et si leur besoin, c'était d'abord la scolarisation, ils les orientent pour la formation, en fait, de retourner à l'école. On se rend compte que ce sont des bons élèves qui se développent dans le bon sens. Mais par manque, les moyens sont limités par rapport aux demandes. Dans un seul sens, c'est difficile de couvrir tous les besoins. Merci. So, when, um, when a young person has been identified and sensibilized to leaving the armed groups, um, armed groups the um, NGO is going to assess what that person needs will be. And uh, often, um, the main need is education, so they are directed towards centers like ETN. And often, they can realize that um, really they, those are great students, that the main issue they've been facing is either the lack of means to get that education or, or just the lack of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you both Isaac and Timothy for, ask, for answering the questions and thank you for all those wonderful questions coming from all over New York and Florida. So April 28th marks a, a critical milestone for the One Million Bones Project and our collective efforts to cover the National Mall in DC in 2013 with One Million Handmade Bones as a visible petition against mass atrocities. For every bone made, a dollar is donated to care. Simultaneous bone laying demonstrations will take place on, in all 50 state capitals on April 28th. This was already done in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Let's watch a clip. That's when I lost my father, and then in 1998 I lost my brother and my two nephews, and then uh, my friends, uh, our neighbors, pastors, uh, you know, all those. Pe I knew all those people who, who, who got killed that same night. support, we're asking everyone to get involved in the Global Day of Action on April 28th. Make a bone, host a bone making party, and share this call of action to all of your friends. Panelist, as we come to a conclusion, we have one final question. Though the conflict may seem overwhelming, there are many ways we can get involved and help. So in 60 seconds, let's answer, how can young people get involved to helping combat this crisis? We'll start with JD. 
Pauline, Timothy, Isaac, I wish I was in Goma with you. Throughout all of my travels, I've been so inspired by the limitless hope and resolve of the people there in Goma and throughout Eastern Congo, and the beauty of the country. Second largest forest in the world behind the Amazon. Limitless natural beauty, uh, strength and hope of the people. Yet armed groups wreak havoc on local communities in competition with each other over minerals. And there's so much that we can do here as U.S. youth to combat this violence and in partnership help local leaders in Congo lead their people and youth to peace. Join our movement by texting the word Congo to 30644 and be able to take actions with youth across the world to force electronics companies to do the right thing and clean up their minerals operations in Congo. Thank you. Thanks, JD. And now we'll go to Timothy. Merci pour la parole. La différence ne viendra que avec l'appui à distance ou proche, avec les initiatives telles que JNG est en train de faire pour les jeunes congolais. Ça, ça va nous donner le courage et les opportunités d'être ouverts aux autres jeunes et aux autres, aux autres bienfaiteurs pour aider les jeunes du Congo. Merci. Uh, it was saying, well, it's a really broad question to answer in 60 seconds because there are so many things that everyone could be doing um, to support um, the youth here in Congo. Um, he was saying that it's really important that there are projects exactly that the, like the one that we're taking part in right now, the One, one Million Bones campaign and what uh, Raising Hope for Congo is doing as well. And that it's really important for people to feel that there are initiatives and that they are uh, understanding and hope of people abroad and interest um, for the young people here. So we think that's really encouraging. And knowing that people abroad care about what's going on here actually makes a difference already because it helps them having the courage to stand up and take action to what's um, going on here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Timothy. And now, Isaac, in 60 seconds, how can youth in North America and all over the world help to combat this crisis? Thank you so much. Uh, there is an expression which says that many hands make a light worker. It means that when a problem is faced by many persons, there it can found a solution easily. There are I can say this, it will be good for us to still be uh, having a good collaboration with the other, other, other people, other foreign people, because it will help us to, it, help, it will help to add the development or to the, the, the development of our country. It means, uh, when we have a good partnership, when we know our culture and our aspiration, when others know our target, and when you are giving us your advice, it will help us to develop our country. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. And now a few questions from our audience again. So another question is, other than raising funds, is there an organization that students can send supplies to reach needy people? So I'll post this to JD. I think what's, what's needed most is both to give money directly to groups on the ground, such as ETN, Care International. Um, Isaac had mentioned, sorry, Timothy had mentioned working at Heal Heal Africa as a phenomenal hospital and clinic that's providing much needed medical services to the people of Eastern Congo. But beyond that, I think for youth, it's taking action. Taking action through One Million Bones, taking action through the Raise Hope for Congo campaign does the most to bring peace and stability to Congo the fastest. Thanks so much. And now we'll go to the poll question. So the question was, what is the number one contributor to the lack of education in the DRC? Weak infrastructure, the price of education, insecurity, or all of the above? And the question, is, the answer is all of the above. There are many different factors that are a part of this conflict and the fact that Congolese youth are, do not have um, as much education as they would like. 
So now, many thanks to everyone for participating, especially our participants. As a reminder, an exciting way for everyone to get involved is through the One Million Bones Project by making a bone, which triggers a dollar donation to CARE, which goes directly to ETN in Goma. And participate in the Day of Action on April 28th. So thanks everyone again, and check out all of the available resources on the Students Rebuild website. There's tons of videos and a lesson plan and also Pauline's blog right from the Congo. So thank you so much everyone for participating, Timothy, Isaac, Pauline, and JED, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you.